Next up here at our studio in Stockholm is Karolinska Development and presenting is CEO Victor Drvota. Welcome, Victor. Thank you, Michael. So, as I said, I am representing Karolinska Development. I have a small disclaimer to show you. And um, Karolinska Development is an investment company listed on the Nasdaq small cap. And uh, we're focusing on growth stage life science. Um, we are integrated in the Karolinska Institute uh, slash hospital environment and we have a, a proprietary deal from, uh, from there and many of our investments are, have been originated uh, at Karolinska Institute. Although we are not exclusively there, we also have uh, Finnish investments and investments from other parts of, of uh, Scandinavia. We have a late stage uh, first in class uh, portfolio uh, with several significant exit opportunities over the coming two to three years. And going forward, we will use our specialist team to invest and focus on drug development, med tech and digital health, which have an exit potential within three to four years. Historically, there is a lot of companies that has come out of uh, the Karolinska development portfolio since the company was started as early as 2003 and listed in 11. Uh, for example, oncopeptides, um, Bioarctic have been part of our portfolio. Aprea, which is listed in New York, have been part of our portfolio. Um, Xpray also and many other companies that are on the stock exchange today have been a part of the Karolinska development portfolio. So <coughs> as I said, many companies have been part of the Karolinska development portfolio. At the most, Karolinska development had uh, almost 40 uh, portfolio companies, but uh, not enough money to support all of these companies uh, going through ne to next value inflection point. So uh, what we have done is we have refined the portfolio, focusing on first in class assets uh, uh, in order to give our investors a significant upside. Historically, uh, Karolinska development have uh, had a sometimes pretty troublesome financial history with convertible loans etc that have uh, been resolved. We have a new team on board, I will, I will talk more about that. We also have a, a new board and uh, we also have a new strong owner, a major owner who is, is backing us. So what have we learned over the years? Uh, of life science invest of doing life science investment. Well, you have to have clear value inflection points. It's depending on type of company we're talking about. It's either clinical or sales. Uh, clinical we usually aim at phase two or phase two A. So we have a proof of concept. And if, as regards sales, it has to be reimbursement uh, and. Uh, uh, Hopefully, we can take the companies within MedTech cash flow positive uh, within three to four years. So, and when we look at companies, it's also very important to set the right management and board. It's extremely important that we choose people who have not just done drug development before, but who has also done specifically the, the thing that this company is doing. If it's implants, for example, then we uh, look for people who have that specific knowledge and who have done that journey before, uh, not general medtech people. And that is really uh, important and it's a key successful, successful, a success factor, we believe, uh, because they know all the pitfalls within this specific area. Also, when you finance these companies, you should finance them to cover the whole path to next uh, value inflection points. It can sometimes be difficult to guess. In a drug discovery case, it's usually pretty obvious that you, and, but sometimes uh, you encounter things that you, you couldn't account for uh, before. And, uh, so it's, it's really important that you at least try to finance them with some buffer uh, to the next value inflection points. Karolinska Development also have a very experienced team that is what I will come back to here. Uh, 
It's myself. I am a MD, PhD. I used to be associate professor of cardiology. Uh, and I have now done uh, 19 years of venture capital with several IPOs uh, and uh, trade sales, um, uh, <coughs> both at SAB Venture Capital and here at Karolinska Development. We also have uh, Per Anjansson, who has been an um, investor for over 20 years uh, and within various venture firms, both in uh, tech and uh, life science. Then we have John Oed, who has been uh, within the um, drug discovery industry for uh, uh, almost 20 years. He uh, has a huge drug development experience and he is our CSO. And then we have a general counsel, uh, Johan Dighed, who has been within finance uh, for uh, almost 20 years as well. Um, then we have also an expert network that we can rely on when we need. And we also have a connection in to, to China and our main owner in uh, Yan Cheng, who is, uh, who is an investor as well. So what have we accomplished over uh, the last few years since 2016? Until 2016, uh, Karolinska Development uh, had done only one small trade sale, gaining 25 million crowns, and it was a lot of money being spent. Uh, what we have achieved since 2016 uh, with uh, me and uh, the, uh, the new team, uh, part of it is really new, but uh, we are uh, quite a few uh, people who, is, uh, who has been around since 2016 also. We have increased the portfolio value from 149 to over a billion sec. We have had almost three and a half billion sec invested into uh, the, our portfolio companies where we have invested uh, 366 million. We have done several exits. Uh, uh, received 328 uh, million sec in exits proceed from various uh, exits among those by Arctic, X-Pray, Pharmanest, Oncopeptides, etc. We have done uh, eight IPOs and we had a pretty cumbersome convertible bond uh, of 466 million sec and that we managed to uh, convert and repay in 2019. So in essence, we have turned this company around. Um, as I said, I mean, this is part of uh, companies that have uh, been passing through our portfolio. And if you look at these four, Biarctic, Oncopeptides, Aprea and Xpray, their total value today is, is uh, 18 billion sec. Uh, and there are others in here that, uh, that we could also account for. So, what do we have in our portfolio? Well, I would say there is a good risk spreading in our portfolio. If you look at disease areas, we are within oncology, i.e. cancer, we are within sepsis, uh, we are within women's health, we are within vaccines, uh, we are within cardiovascular, uh, we are within CNS. We also do have two medtech companies that are within implants, orthopedic implants. So there is a, a, a wide risk spreading among the disease areas that we have here. We also have a risk spreading uh, if you look at uh, the f stages where the companies are. So as you can see, there is a lot of companies who are now or during the coming years going through phase two. I think the most recent one that went through phase two is Dilafor which reported their um, results just before summer. And Dilafour rep uh, reported really impressive uh, results in labor induction. And that's a phase 2B study. So now we're looking to uh, do a dual track with this company, i.e. trade sale or IPO based on the results we have. And that we have communicated earlier that when we take the companies to fa through phase 2, if there is positive results, we will definitely try to do an IPO or a trade sale. Some of these companies have also been listed over the year. Modus have been listed uh, and we aim to list uh, Umicrine Cognition, which is a CNS uh, company. 
so, and as you can see, many of the companies also have uh, several indications, like for example, Umicrine cognition. So, mo many of them are not only one trick ponies, that we try to have several indications in each of uh, these uh, assets. So, we try to spread our risk among stages and among disease areas and also between med tech and drug development. So what is the investment strategy? I think uh, what is worth mentioning is that uh, what, as regards seed capital, this is not really seed capital. What we have done, for example, uh, this year is a company called Anacardio. Anacardio is based on novel science coming out of the Karolinska Hospital slash Institute, the Department of Cardiology. And we are going directly into phase two with a heart failure drug. So I think, well, we created a company around the founder, uh, we invested into it, and then we, will go, we are going to do a phase two study. So it's actually quite mature, although we will call this seed capital. And as you can understand, when you create a company and put together a company like this, the valuations you can enter in are, are uh, really good. And uh, exit potential, for, for example, in heart failure is enormous. I mean, it's one of the biggest uh, disease. So it, these are the type of investments that we are looking. Uh, to do. Also, I mean, we have a lot of venture capital investments where we invest together with other investors. We will, of course, do that in the seed capital as well. But in venture capital, we enter into the companies together with other venture capital colleagues. One company is, for example, Forendo, where we are with Novartis, uh, Merck Ventures, uh, Sunstone, Novo, etc. What we are also going to do is that we are going to look at more mature stages to go in and do venture investments in public equity. In, so it is investments uh, in listed uh, companies in First North. We believe that the valuations at First North for some of the companies are, uh, can be uh, really good um, if you compare in an international perspective. And also we'll do what we call crossover, which is essentially IPO. That is uh, something that's been done uh, on the US market for a while, validating the company before the IPO. That is something that we're also lo looking into. So, I mean, where are we, what is our focus to be when we look at all of these areas? Well, if you look backwards and see <coughs> where can you actually earn money? Then you will find that it's usually drug discovery, although uh, it is sometimes uh, referred to as a binary risk. It is, but that is where, uh, if you look at life science venture, where most of the returns have come from. So it's more likely that you will get return from a drug discovery company if you enter at the right stage, i.e you financed early clinical phases than if you enter into a medical or digital health company because the risk is totally different in the medical device company. The risk in the medical device company is more of a market risk. You have to take the company usually through to cash flow positive. You have to prove yourself in the market. It's not only the science, it's selling, it's reimbursement, etc. So there is a totally different risk, uh, so, uh, which means that the medtech cases are, they are not, uh, they are, I would argue, at least the same risk as the drug discovery companies, but it's a different type of risk. So, a short summary. If you don't want to invest into uh, specific companies, you can invest into a portfolio of companies with a very exper experienced management team who have uh, worked with venture capital within life science for almost 20 years. Um, with the, the 
turnaround of KD is now completed and we have done several exits, IPOs, etc. I think we have proven ourselves that we are able to do this. Uh, we have a unique deal sourcing capability as for example Anacardia which we took right out of the clinic at the Karolinska Institute and also Svenska Vaccinfabriken which we did the same and set up a company around uh, hepatitis uh, uh, D and B uh, curative vaccine. Um, we have a um, lot of upcoming attractive value inflection points that could potentially give us a lot of exit proceeds. We have a new strong main owner in Sino Biopharmaceuticals, uh, uh, which uh, have been very supportive. Uh, and we have a very experienced management team combining a lot of uh, uh, expertise in various areas, uh, such as legal, drug development, and venture capital and investment in general. Thank you. Thank you so much for that presentation, mm -hmm. Victor. Um, I just have a couple of questions for you. First of all, uh, when evaluating possible investments, uh, what criteria would you say are the most important? I mean, it's obvious ones, right? It has to be an interesting technology, it has to be a medical need, etc., etc. But I think management is really important. It's really important to set new management. Many of these companies go into something that nobody has done before. It can be, I mean, you have uh, discovered something totally new and, you know, it's like Christopher Columbus going to, Amer going to America. He thought he was going to India and all of a sudden people are shooting arrows at him. <laughs> so that's, that's the way, uh, which means that management has to be very flexible uh, and, uh, to, and to be able to adjust whenever there's a new competitor or something happens. So uh, they can go either right or left or uh, straight ahead if that's needed and to be able to change the mindset be, uh, due to the circumstances mm. that are coming up. Mm. Well, speaking of mindset, mm. uh, when would you say is a good time to let go and divest? So, I mean, we have a clear strategy uh, for uh, drug development companies. It's phase 2A. We would like to finance late preclinical phase 1, phase 2A. Then, if that's positive, we would like to uh, do either an IPO to take it to the next step if that's needed, but preferably a trade sale. A drug development would like to enter uh, when uh, the, they already have a turnover uh, or, and we see that there is reimbursement, they are on the way to cash flow positive, there is a big market need, the market dynamics are such that there will be a buyer there and that there is a buyer universe, not just th two or three buyers, which can be the case sometimes in med tech. Uh, so uh, that's sort of the sweet spot that we're looking, looking at. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, looking at the near term in the fourth quarter, uh, what would be the most important thing for Karolinska development? Yeah, so we have uh, several uh, companies now that are really important for us. One is Humor Crime Cognition, where we're going to do an IPO. That's really important for us. Also uh, to uh, uh, be, come up and run with um, dual track uh, for Dilla4. That's a really important uh, asset for us as well, as well. So I think those uh, looking near term, those are the two most important. And also we have an up coming IPO of Promimic in the first uh, quarter of next year. So there's a lot of things happening. Uh, those are the most important things for us right now. Mm -hmm. Sounds very promising. Well, thanks so much for answering the questions and thanks for your presentation. And mm -hmm. we wish you all the best for your coming work. Thank you.